back to Illinois. Get tough on crime and corruption. Vote Steve Kim for Attorney General. Paid for by Citizens for Judicial Fairness. Come to the unveiling of the Prairie Flyers exhibit at the C.H. Moore Museum and Homestead in Clinton on Saturday, May 28th. The exhibit located at the Carriage Barn will highlight the stories of aviation in DeWitt County. The museum has asked for artifacts and stories from DeWitt County residents and they've delivered with them being unveiled on May 28th. There'll be special activities for kids and adults that day to kick off the exhibit, which will be on display until July 3rd. Join the C.H. Moore Museum and Homestead in Clinton as they celebrate the Prairie Flyers, a century of aviation in DeWitt County starting Saturday, May 28th. You're listening to The Morning Show, streamed by clicking the WHOW Live icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. Top of the morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence. The WHOW Morning Show streams to Facebook and YouTube. It's brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin insurance agent in Clinton. My guest in this segment of The Morning Show is John Williamson, DNR Conservation Police Acting Captain. Good morning, John. Good morning, Seth. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm all right. You know, the Cubs started out real strong, and then they just kind of fell off off the wagon man what the heck happened young team patrick wisdom's getting hot again he though is. so yeah he is. is he a long-term guy you think or I is he just no a, idea just a placeholder yep i don't know i i really haven't paid that much attention you know it's just there's some interesting what are you pieces doing there in your life john i i like other stuff oh you come in here and i'm ready to talk baseball you know and john's not john's not ready to roll i'm not ready to roll you got it see now i know how you feel when you're ready to come in here talk outdoor stuff <laughs> yeah not, there you go and i'm not ready to go so no. well if you want to talk Cubs baseball i know is morell that's what i'm going to say right oh now. yeah there you go yeah well first uh, at bat was a home run yep. right yep and kind of a journey not like journeyman but just a guy that spent a lot of time in the minors they say, right? yeah it was, it was, yeah and then he's played when he started he's played in started five games and played four different positions starting yeah, wise yeah crazy. so yeah cool story. crazy skills it's those it's those types of guys that are a lot of fun to root for but yep. uh john let's dive into all things dnr busy weekend coming our way it's of what's, course what's going on this weekend memorial day oh that's right yeah, yeah, see, yeah. this is uh i can't I, believe you forgot after 20 some years you try to forget that as a <laughs> conservation officer so no but uh, kind of the the unofficial kickoff to the boating season and you know to be honest it's probably going to be the kickoff to the boating season because the weather has just been horrendous yeah you know and this is these are kind of the ones that we'd love to see happen but where i'm also fearful if you have that really great weather on Memorial Day weekend. It's the busiest weekend mm -hmm. of the summer season. Yeah. And we're we're shaping up for that. Yep, uh, no doubt. So what's what what comes to mind when you worry about Memorial Day weekend? Safety. What? Safety in the park, safety on the water, safety fishing, safety everywhere is what we worry about. What do you see that's not safe when it's a real busy weekend? I mean, our main folk, one of our main folks this weekend is gonna be impaired drivers mm -hmm. on, on boats, cars, whatever. Um, you know, this, like I said, everybody's been cooped up inside. We've had the pandemic, we've had everything, and now they're going to get some good weather, uh, a holiday weekend and, and want to enjoy it, but we want to show them to enjoy it safely. Sure. Sure. What does that mean? What, what do we need to do to just have, have designated drivers, make sure that you're safe when you're, you know, you, you're traveling in our campgrounds. Uh, you know, it, it, we don't, you'd be surprised how many accidents we have in and out of our campgrounds that are, you know, 20 miles an hour just because people just don't use common sense and are mm -hmm. inebriated, that sort of thing. And, and it just makes a problem. So we just want everybody to, to be safe. Uh, appreciate the other people. We have a lot of, you know, when you get that many people around and, and tensions get high, you have arguments, things like that. So mm. just be like, just be kind, you know, yeah. be good to other people, let other people enjoy themselves yeah. and, and that sort of thing. Let's start on the water uh, when it comes to the safety and Memorial Day weekend. What it like a real busy Memorial Day weekend on the water? What does it look like? Like our boats bumper to bumper? Is there room to move? There's room to move, but a lot of times there's not a lot of room for skiing and water skiing in some of the places that you really? usually would normally see it. So it's kind of a migration. You know, we talk about it in the, in the spring with the, with the fish on Clinton Lake, because you have the hot water side mm -hmm. and everybody's there at the start of the season when they open that up. Mm -hmm. And as the water heats up, they all move West. Well, it's kind of like the boaters right now, all the boaters are going to be on the, on the, uh, east side of the lake towards yeah. the hot water mm -hmm. and as it warms up they all move down i would expect to see just almost boat to boat traffic on the on the what we call boat to boat it's not like cars where they're parked but what do, what do cars have that boats don't brakes brakes there you go good yeah, yeah. so i mean you've got more room than you do on a highway or something but still it'll be a lot of boats i'm expecting on the on the warm water section there so yeah. uh it's just just be safe you know 
if you want to water skin things, get away from people as much as you possibly can. And there might be a portion during the day where it's just really hard and you, you need you need to pull the tow ropes in and not worry about tubing or skiing and yeah. and just enjoy the lake as it is. So this may be a really stupid question. Do you see folks when you're uh, Memorial Day weekend, will they come out on Friday after work? They'll throw the boat on the water and they won't leave the water until, you know, sure. maybe Monday afternoon. Not a lot of people do that, but there are some that do that, especially if they have a campsite, they will, you know, they'll, mm. they'll pull up their campsite and, and do that. But we'll have some people that'll anchor on the lake overnight and stay when they do that. All they've got to have is an anchor light on the boat. The lake doesn't close down. So they're, they're fine. They just need to have an anchor light on their boat. Between What's that the hours. So it's a white light in the back of the boat mm. that you're required to have. Um, anytime the boat is sitting between the hours of sunset and sunrise. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yep. How big are boats that are on Clinton Lake these days? Like, are they big enough where like there's room to oh, yeah. sleep and stuff like oh, that? Yeah. Like, like, there's so some... this is a really stupid question again, like yacht level type of stuff. I mean, s quote, small type yacht level. There's a couple carvers out there. They're really nice boats and mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're bigger boats. I'm guessing anywhere between 30 and, you know, over, over 30 feet. You know, wow. so they're they're really big boats, man, man, yeah. that's got to be fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to boating safety, John, you talk about obviously checking for impaired, you know, operator, mm -hmm. operators and those sorts of things just never hurts to remind you can drink on a boat. Uh, you just can't be impaired, impaired, up, yeah. right? Correct. It, it has the same, you know, statutory legal limit as a car point zero eight. But if if there's an accident or something, or we, we see impairment even below that, you could be arrested for OUI. Okay. And which is the same as with a car. So it's just, you just got to be smart. And the, and the safest way is to have a designated driver. That's mm -hmm. what we always ask for. You know, if you get drinking, you forget how many you have, whatever. And, and it's, it's tough. So it's better just to have somebody on there that's completely sober and can operate the boat and take care of everybody on board. Just thought of this. Um, littering, a big problem. Oh, littering is a big problem. We get calls about that all the time for the shore fishermen, for the boaters, um, you know, the, the, you just wonder how many, how much the state can make if they mine the aluminum out of uh houseboat cove, <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of the, the joke about it. But yeah, whatever you take in, take out, you know, that's kind of the, the rule for camping. It should be the rule for fishermen as they, as they bank fish, the boaters, uh, picnickers, everyone, whatever you take in, take out with you. You know, there's a great trash can there. Great. But if not, make sure you're hauling it back out with you. Sure. Uh, John, talk to me a little bit about fishing safety and maybe fishing regulations on such on Clinton Lake. What do we need to keep in mind? Uh, basically, you know, our, our don't have a huge this time of year safety. You know, we always talk about safety with fishermen is during ice, ice season oh, and sure. getting mm -hmm. on the ice. But with the water is up on the lake with all the water we've had. So some of the places you've usually gone where there's been open bank are not going to be that way. So but if you're if you and if you're not sure that you, your swimming abilities, um, it's good to wear a life jacket, even if you're on shore, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that way you slip in the water, something like that. And especially if you're fishing somewhere alone by yourself, you know, that's those are some of our kind of our, our saddest moments. And when we have to go out and find, we, we get calls about something like that. And somebody yeah. was out by themselves and had mm -hmm. no help with them. And if yeah. they just would have wore a life jacket or something, they, they could have uh, saved themselves. I was going to say, we've seen that a couple of times. Yep, the last we sure year have. Year, that's, so. it's just, it's sad. It's sad for you, sad for the family. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So just use your smarts and know what everything else and the rules and regs are, we've got books out now on Clinton Lake, you know, 15, one of the, probably the main limits we, we look at are bass limits are, are three per person and, and uh, minimum size limit of 16 inches crappies, uh, 15 limit minimum of nine inches, uh, catfish. Is that and, to keep? That's to keep. Yep. Yep, and then uh, catfish are 10 total for the day. So those are the main limits we see on the lake that we, we watch out for. Yeah, for sure. When it comes to uh, the life jacket piece, uh, going back to the boating, mm -hmm. uh, remind us about those. Yeah, so for boating equipment, the main main one we look for are life jackets. Everyone on the, bo on the boat has to have a wearable life jacket. So they need to have a jacket that's the right size, type, and fit for what they're doing. So if... And they've, they've changed kind of some of the designations. So if you go to buy a life jacket now, it may look a little different, but but pretty much the rules are the same. Um, you need everyone needs to have one on board. Now, if you're under the if you're over the age of 13, you don't have to be wearing it all the time, mm -hmm. but you have to have one on board and accessible. Okay. If you're under the age of 13, you do have to have one on the whole time that person is on board. Okay. Need to be the right size, type, and fit. So you can't take a a little kid and put an adult life jacket on them because what's that going to happen once they hit the water they're just gonna it's gonna, it's gonna slide right off yeah them. they're gonna go to the bottom and the, and the life jacket's gonna still be sitting at the top yep, yep so any boat 16 feet or longer has to have a type 4 throwable on there so like a ring buoy or like one of your seat cushions they've got to have that on there okay if you have a gasoline motor you need to make sure that you have a fire extinguisher on board mm -hmm. 
and then uh, all your batteries need to be covered and secured to the hull of the boat. Make sure all the terminals are covered so we can't have a sparking incident and have an explosion or boat fire or something like that. Well, and a lot of this is probably preventable before you get on the water, right? It is. It's huge. That that's this is the kind of this is the weekend we get a lot of people that haven't had their boat on there since last year sometime and want to bring it out. And you know, we talked about this last time. Is hey, if you're if you're planning on going out Memorial Day weekend, get that boat out once or twice beforehand. Run it, make sure it's good. Uh, make sure you're you're able to to uh, uh, start it up. Start and- it up. Make sure all the safety. Check your fire extinguisher. Make sure you got a horn or whistle. Make mm-hmm. sure you know if you're going to be out after dark. Make sure you've got your your bow light and your and your anchor light. Make sure everything's good to go. Mm-hmm. So those are those are just the little things we're going to be looking for when we're out on the water. Do you find um and and you talked about you know getting the boat out there before you know a couple of times before fire it up just mm-hmm. make sure it works I'm, I'm wondering do you find like folks from out of the area they they store their um they store their boat out at the boat storage place mm-hmm. they're off route 10 and then they just pick it up and take it to the lake and that's the first time they use it is is there much of that that goes on there's some of that more of the more of the people we'll see is they store them they live in champagne as an example and there's no water to put it on around champagne, whatever. So they just bring it over for the day because it's otherwise they'd spend about half a day just trying to get the boat over here, get on the water, run it, mm. and take it back. So those are the guys are going to kind of flip, you know, flip the coin. Yeah, it should work. Everything should be fine, and yeah, and there yeah. you go. So yeah. you know, probably another talking point, John, as we get ready for break here. You know, if you are coming to Clinton Lake this weekend, uh, you know, plan to be plan to wait a little bit if you're going to get your boat on the water. Hey, I, and make sure there's parking in whatever ramp you want to use. That's the other problem we have. You know, our, one of our more popular ramps is the scooting ramp, and there's very limited parking there. Mm-hmm. So have a plan of going over to uh, West Side or going to Weldon, where there's a bigger parking lot, and more parking, that sort of stuff, so that, you know, you can get on and off the boat. Our uh, uh, ramp over at West Side or, and Dock is kind of, it's safe, but it's there's a section missing out of it. So it's going to, it's going to take a while to get people on and off and be safe around that dock. Sure. Sure. Um, that sort of thing. Sure. John's take a break. Come back. Talk some more. John Williamson, DNR conservation, uh, ac- uh, acting captain, our guest in studio. More to come on the morning show. MR Systems Wireless is your local internet provider for Clinton and surrounding area. They have the products you want and the local service you deserve. MR Systems Wireless Internet Service for home or business includes unlimited data, unlimited streaming, and unlimited calling. Plans start at just $48 a month and get a free Roku 4 lease with our media packages. Get the speed you need with MR Systems Wireless. Call them at 935-2100. That's 935-2100 for MR Systems Wireless. Warner Hospital and Health Services in Clinton uses the latest technology for positive patient outcomes with a new state-of-the-art CT machine next to our ER. CEO Paul Scarin asking you to find out more by clicking our icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. When it comes to fire and water restoration, ServPro of Piatt DeWitt Counties is the leader in cleaning, restoration, and construction. Find out all the services they provide by clicking their icon at dwitdailynews.com. In a dangerous world, who can we trust to keep America safe? Not Mary Miller. Miller voted with Bernie Sanders, AOC, and Ilhan Omar to defund our military. Mary Miller was the only Republican from Illinois to vote against the defense budget. Her liberal vote would have cut off funding for our troops at a time when America's enemies are on the march. So reckless. Mary Miller voted against funding to deploy the National Guard to combat illegal immigration and drug smuggling. Mary Miller stood with the Socialist Squad instead of our brave men and women in uniform. Mary Miller can't be trusted. Conservative Congressman Rodney Davis believes in the Reagan mantra of peace through strength. That's why Rodney voted to strengthen our military and give our troops a pay raise. Rodney Davis is the conservative who will keep America safe. I'm Rodney Davis. I'm running for Congress, and I approve this message. Paid for by Rodney for Congress. You're listening to The Morning Show, streamed by clicking the WHOW Live icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. Once again, and good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence. My guest in studio this morning is John Williamson, DNR Conservation Acting Police Captain, our guest in studio. Captain Williamson, let's talk a little bit about camping safety and uh, what comes to mind for you there. Uh, make sure the marshmallows aren't too hot when you put them in your mouth so you don't burn the roof of your mouth. 
That's, All right. There's my safety tip for camping. No, you know, we, we get, we get some accidents every year with campers, you know, and that's another thing, you know, we don't talk about as much as boats because we don't have the accident quite as much, but I've dealt with, with camper fires and explosions from people getting them out and not having them, you know, mm -hmm. using them with propane being involved, that sort of stuff. Oh, wow. So make sure you check, get your camper checked out, make sure you, you, you know, you vent it well before you, when you light it the first time, make sure there's no uh, issues in the propane system, that sort of thing. So that you stay safe. Um, kids if it's going to catch on fire, make sure it catches on fire at your house. Well, that, <laughs> that would, that would be better for me. I don't want it to catch on fire anywhere, but, uh, but I think they'd rather have that happen than in the middle of a campground and, and yeah. when you're trying to have fun for the weekend. Sure. Uh, but there's ways there's you can take it to a dealer they'll check it out there's ways to check it so just make sure you check out your stuff before you get to the campground sure. you know we don't want just we don't want injuries like i said safety 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 with everything yeah you know we're we're at our, our max pull for the weekend with all the boats everything else going on um so you know around your campsites just make sure everything's safe campfires we deal with that every year some burns that sort of mm -hmm, thing mm -hmm. so just make sure of stuff and mm -hmm. uh bug bites that sort of thing make sure you bring your off mm -hmm. it sounds like it's it's been warm already the bugs have already started yeah uh but i'll just, tell you what that first day it was like 85 90 degrees i was already seeing mosquitoes oh, and like yeah. the day before it was like 50 degrees exactly. outside you know it, so that, that change was horrible yeah it was yeah. just i've melted i think yeah a little yep. bit uh john when it comes to uh we talked about the the boating parking uh -huh. at, at clinton lake just talk about you know people visiting the beach the camp campers people yeah. may be visiting campsites of someone else and and just the the parking situation at the lake in general you know it, it's such a frustrating factor for the people and for us because the people think well there's no one out of spaces i can just park off to the side i'm not hurting anything well yes you are mm -hmm. because once we let one vehicle park over there then we have vehicles line up and if we have an emergency situation, we've got to be able, we want to make sure emergency vehicles can get in, get out everywhere else. And it is probably one of the more heated discussions we have over weekends is when people park illegally. Oh, wow. And we're just, you know, it's, and it's so frustrating on our side. We try to sign as best as possible. So if the best, the best thing is, is do not park on the grass, find a parking space. If you have to walk a little extra, you know, we were talking about a place where you wanted to go, Hey, here's a great place to park. You may have to walk extra for it, but you're going to have a, a great place to park. You're in a, and, and it's totally legal mm -hmm. and go that way. So just plan for that. You know, mm -hmm. as I said, plan on multiple ramps. You know, that's what we get is we have people fighting over a parking spot because one comes available and a guy's going to park there. Well, all of a sudden somebody's standing in the, in the parking spot. No, you can't save a parking spot that way. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just it gets to be the things we have to deal with. It's kind of like, oh, please, not again. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and, and we don't want to be in the middle of those sort of things. Yeah. Yeah. So and, it, and it, I, if I remember right, it can create a safety hazard. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's just the thing we've, we've got, we've got to look at the safety of everyone, not just, not just the, the person that's trying to find a place to park. Sure. Sure. So that's our, that's our deal. And that's why we do it. We don't want to tow cars. We don't want to have, have to get out and ticket people. We mm -hmm. don't want that. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty of different places to park. The Marina's got a huge parking lot. Mm -hmm. Weldon spring, or I'm sorry, Weldon ramp has a huge parking lot with a huge overflow. Um, uh, West side's the same. So there'll be a place to launch your boat, but just like you said earlier, you know, relax, take your time, enjoy yourself. It may be a little while before you get on and off the water, but mm -hmm. it's just the way it is. You know, we're going to uh, embark on a dry summer. It sounds like John National Weather Service talking about below yeah. average rainfall, above normal temperatures. So it's going to be hot and dry, uh -huh. it, which means, you know, it, it, you want to be cognizant of maybe those campfires are starting. Maybe that grill that's going with the charcoal yeah. and things. Make sure that if you're not in, you know, mo not monitoring mm -hmm. those, you've got those tampered down. Yeah, just make sure they're not left un unattended and only have fires in place that you're allowed to uh you know i think it was probably three or four years ago that we closed down all fires in, in the campground you know no open flames whatsoever and that's kind of a bummer when you're when you're camping that seems to be part of it whether it be a grill whether it be a a campfire everything else so uh no open you know we just if you just watch the the fire hazards and watch the signs as you come into the parks in different places uh, one of the bigger deals we have is that people you don't want to uh pull up a shoreline fish or, or are going to spend the day during the shoreline. They want to build a fire. Those aren't, you can't build, do that. Mm -hmm. The only place you can have fires at the park or where there's already fire rings, established fire rings or, 
or or grills or enter campsites that sort of stuff so you need to follow those rules because we don't want to have a huge fire take place we don't want to endanger people's houses everything else yeah, you know we yeah. see those see it on tv out west right now what's going on and we don't want to deal with that here gonna get worse out west it sounds like yeah, it's gonna it be sure real does. dry so john uh when it comes to just clinton lake in general will dnr have a pretty big presence this coming weekend and this summer we should oh we always will i mean clinton lake is kind of is kind of the place we concentrate for the summer but we try to maximize everything we can do we've got a couple new officers coming in later hopefully this year and hopefully we'll be able to expand and hit some of the other bodies of water and, and the little littler parks here there wherever but mm -hmm. we're decent shape staffing wise we're better than we have been in a while so we'll be able to hopefully uh, hit a few more places 30 seconds uh Weldon Springs, anything come to mind out there? The same safety stuff there with Weldon Springs. You know, it's it's a smaller park, but we still have a campground. We still have a lake. People still need to be safety, safety, safety conscious. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. that's probably probably the hardest thing on a, on a nice holiday weekend is to have to deal with a family tragedy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, John, always good to talk to you, sir. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. John Williamson, DNR Conservation Acting Police Captain, our guest in studio here for this morning. The morning show streams to Facebook and YouTube. It's brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin Insurance agent in Clinton. Network news on the way.